Good evening and welcome to your call. Joining me tonight, a very special guest, Arun Jaitley, leader of the opposition in the Rajya Sabha. Mr. Jaitley, thanks for coming in. In a week where being a politician is a tough job because whether it's Mr. Nitin Gadkari, whether it's now Mr. Sharad Pawar, whether it's uh, the Congress president's son-in-law, political parties have been charged with looting the country in different ways. Well, I think one can make all kinds of allegations. But ultimately, Indian democracy and the people have a sense of fairness. So to distinguish between chalk and cheese is not a very impossible task. People may try and muddy the water. But at the end of the day, people have to make a choice. And therefore, I have nothing against people who make allegations and perceive themselves as crusaders. But at the same time, when they say something, they must carefully go through every allegation that they make. If they trip, then the credibility of crusaders comes into question. Now, some of the charges I have seen do make a lot of sense and there is substance in them. Some of them, I think they are grossly exaggerating and overstating their case. Though this is not entirely a legal aspect because uh, the issues that are being raised are of propriety, of conflict of interest, of the issue of how a, public, a politician is benefiting in a way a, uh, an arm admi or a mango man can't. For instance, if you see the charges against Mr. Nitin Gadkari, the argument is that why was his file cleared within four days? Why did he get sanctions uh, and uh, much more than, say, a farmer would get? Well, I don't think there was any competing interest asking for those sanctions. Now, one has to look at, rather than uh, go into bald allegations, I'm a little familiar with the Land Acquisition Act. After possession has been taken under the old act, it may be unfair, but that's the act. You lose your right to even get possession back. Then it can't be released from acquisition. And in this case, you are talking of a situation 22 years after acquisition, 22 years after you had received compensation. I don't, I'm not aware of any provision of any law where you can get your land back. Now, a wasteland is lying. You apply to the government. I, I'm still not sure whether it's four days because one has to check up the government r records. And this is given to a trust on a lease for 11 years to grow sugarcane saplings so that in those dry, drought-prone areas of uh, 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 Vidarbha, the farmers could be trained to grow sugarcane. And this is sugarcane which is brought from uh, uh, Western Maharashtra. Now, to perceive this as some kind of a huge scam, uh, I think is a bit overstating the case. Well, this is a scam or a story we're doing, which you may not have details on yet, but a story we're doing points to the fact that the Purti group and Mr. Nitin Gadkari's group, it raises questions about uh, certain contracts given when he was PWD minister and the fact that the same company has then bought shares in his Purti group. Well, in the sense of business, I, not, of, in yeah. the sense of his business interest, because Mr. Kejival made the point, is Mr. Gadkari a businessman first or a politician first? I anticipated this problem in my own case. So the day I became the leader of opposition, I not only stopped practice, I surrendered my license. Lest I be accused of uh, uh, identifying myself for or against a particular litigant in court. I took a safer option. But then I have a contrarian argument. How do Indian politicians sustain themselves? Must they detach themselves from their professions, from their jobs, from their businesses completely and then depend on politics for livelihood. Many people may have learned the art of living well without earning. There are still some who haven't. And therefore, I have all my sympathy for politicians who on the side do some uh, remunerative work in order to sustain their families. There's nothing wrong in it. People all over the world do it. And in India, politicians officially are not paid much that uh, uh, they can afford to sustain uh, every situation. But then you are right, once you do that, you run the risk of being before the firing squad. Issues of conflict of interest, throw up a suspicion. Now the question that you were raising, I don't know the facts as yet, but let me just give you a possible answer. If contracts are legitimately given, and these are honestly implemented, well something happened 10 years later, therefore there is a shadow of suspicion. Now that may be too far-fetched uh, a charge. Therefore, somebody has to really look into this in order to say whether there is any unfairness or not. You mentioned uh, how you gave up your legal practice when you became leader of opposition. Would you tell Mr. Gadkari that perhaps he should reconsider his business interests given that he is now heading for a second term well, as why PGD should I president? Tell him that? Why should I tell him that? In fact, there are a lot of people who have business. Can I, can I answer this question by putting a... Maybe I can do it yes. by a question. Let's forget Mr. Gadkari or others. How does an Indian politician 
sustain himself. Are we only going to pick up people from the queue outside the employment exchange and say, please join politics? We only need unemployed people in politics. Or are we going to see people who've distinguished themselves in various fields? In fact, one of the bane of Indian politics is that achievers in different fields are not coming. And therefore, if achievers come in, you had today you have Mr. Parasaran as a member of the Rajya Sabha. Mm -hmm. You had Fali Nariman as a member of the Rajya Sabha. You have other distinguished people who come who are nominated. At times, parties also elect. I remember about four or five years ago in the Rajya Sabha, there was a debate on the budget. And I can tell you this is one of the greatest debates I ever heard. From Arjun Sen Gupta in the Congress to N.K. Singh. Then you had Professor Swaminathan speaking. Then you have the present chairman of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council. He was a member. So you had at least half a dozen economists that each one distinguished better than the other. And therefore, these are all people who may be uh, gainfully working uh, uh, somewhere, but they come to the house and they contribute. Why should we have a situation that you must only have full-timers without a known source of livelihood who are getting into politics? So if somebody honestly wants to earn an, an, on a living uh, uh, independently of his politics, I don't think there's a case for debarring it. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app, fully optimized for retina display, full screen view, faster response time, and Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.